Now that we have the basic data structures in order to represent our source code in tree form, we can begin work on our parser. Start by writing out the skeleton of the parser in a parser.go file. This isn't a total skeleton. We need access to the tokens from our lexer, so we have a reference to our lexer. We also want to keep a reference to the token we are currently analyzing and the next token that is coming down the pipe. Next, write the constructor. In the constructor, we initialize our object with the lexer that we are going to pass in. Next, we are going to call a get token method twice, and this is going to call the get token of our lexer and will populate our two token fields in this class. Then we will return the parser object. As for the get token method, it should look like this. All we are doing is making our current token the next token, and then we get the next token from the lexer. So our parser here is actually one step behind of our lexer. Now create a skeleton method called the parse program. This is how we will start parsing our tokens. From here we will call other methods like parse let statement, parse expression, some of which will call each other in a recursive fashion. This will end up building a nice tree for us to later evaluate. At this point I think it is nice to see a 10,000 foot view of a completed parser. Here is one that I wrote in C++ a couple of years ago. You can see how we use a defined grammar to parse different aspects of the source code. Each one of these functions corresponds to an element of grammar that was defined. They use the current token and the next token to determine what function to call next, and they do this in a recursive manner. For example, we can parse a statement list. We will peek our tokens to see if they have any let statements coming our way. If we do, we parse a single let statement, then we call parse statement list again. In this case, it will stop recursing once our tokens give us a clue that there are no more let statements coming. This type of recursive behavior in a parser is called recursive descent parsing. We start at the root of our tree, in this case, parse program, and we recursively build a tree that branches out from that single function call. And with that kind of understood, let's start fleshing out parse program. While building this parser, we will learn the value of breaking things into small chunks. This should be pretty easy to follow. We initialize the root of our tree as a program instance that we coded in the last video. Then we initialize the statements array to be an empty array of statements. Then we start a loop. While we have not reached the end of our file with the end of file token, we will have our parser parse an entire statement, which we will code in a moment. If the statement is not null, we will append it to our statements array. We then advance our current token with a call to get token. After we parse all of our source code, we simply return our program. Now let's move on to our next little chunk, the parse statement method. This is going to return a statement node from the AST package we did last video. We enter a switch statement to branch depending on our current token type. We will add much more here, but for now, we just want to parse our let statements. And before we write this parse let statement, let's write a couple helper methods first. The first is called expect. We pass in the token type of the token that we expect to see next, and we return true or false depending. When we use expect, we are also moving our parser forward by one. The other helper methods are very simple. They are called current token is and next token is. We pass in a token type and return true or false depending if it matches the target. And with that, we can get into the meat and potatoes, the parse let statement. The parse let statement method should look like the following. Here we are making sure that each function, in this case the parse let statement, sticks to its piece of the grammar, else this whole thing will just turn into a ginormous mess. For let statements, we are wanting to consume a let token, an id token, and an equality token. First, we take our let token and we initialize the let statement that we are going to build. Next, we call expect to consume our ID. And if it isn't an ID, we call BS and we return null. Then we take the ID and put it into the name property of our statement with the lexeme like as the value. Next, we call expect to consume our equality token. Else, we call BS and we return null. And next up would be the expression part of the grammar. And this is going to look like statement.value is equal to parse expression. That method is going to be saved for a later video. So for right now, we are just going to loop until the end of the statement. Then we return the statement. At this point, the work that our parse let statement has to do is done. Parsing the grammar of an expression would be left to an entirely different method. 
but we can work with what we have right now. So in the next video, we are going to write a tester for all of this. I will see you there.